to an all new reaction and review. Tonight guys, I'm taking a look at an exploitation revenge film from 1972 from world famous writer and director Wes Craven. That movie is The Last House on the Left. Now, I know, I know, knowing me and my love of and my love of exploitation films, you'd almost think that I would have watched this fucking thing by now, but I haven't. In fact, the only thing I've seen of this, no, and no, I am not kidding, I watched a trailer for it about a decade ago, and it looked really good, as far as I happen to re, as far as I happen to remember, but I never had a chance to actually watch it. I never really got around to renting it or purchasing it, and well, somebody bought it off of the wish list, and now I'm going to finally get my chance to see it. The only other thing I know about it, besides the fact that it was written and directed by Wes you know, Craven, is and it's thanks to the back of the Blu-ray case here. Uh, it because it very obnoxiously states that uh, Last House on the Left here was the inspiration for the Hostel and Saw movies. And well, I I did enjoy the first the first Hostel, and there were a couple of Saw movies that were incredibly good. Well, not incredibly good, just decent. So I'm kind of curious to see exactly what those what 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 the makers of those two franchises cite as their you know. As their main is their main inspiration, so it's finally time to see if this thing is is nearly as good as I have heard it is. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out the last house on the left. Peeping Tomism. This 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 newscaster just said that one of these that one of these crooks was is wanted for peeping Tomism. Last time I checked, there was no such thing as peeping Tomism. The actual word is voyeurism, and I thought that voyeurism was a word back in 72. Perhaps maybe I was wrong. All right. I have a question. Is it me, or is every piece of music in this movie, like, ridiculously out of place? This is not the kind of music I imagine when I think exploitation, revenge, horror film, alright? This is so much, this is so out of place, it's not even funny. Well, at least it's making me sort of giggle a little, I guess that's sort of a positive. Okay, I would like to make this point real clear right now. These have to be the most retarded, inept kidnappers I've ever seen. I have seen villains in fucking Scooby-Doo who have more sense than this, than this, you know, foursome of idiots. It's kind of funny. You know, perhaps maybe it's just me, but I really don't think that it's a smart idea to carve your name into your victim's chest before, you know, raping them. I don't know why, perhaps maybe it would just get you caught a little bit quicker. Just saying, just, it doesn't seem like the smartest thing in the world. However, though, as I stated earlier, these, these four are basically borderline retarded, so I guess I shouldn't be expecting intelligence from any of them anytime soon, huh? Okay, I have a question. Why the fuck would you bring your blood-soaked clothing with you if you're trying to hide the fact that you committed murder? Wouldn't you just, you know, maybe try to stash that, that fucking clothing in the woods, maybe burn it? Why the fuck would you bring it with you? Again, I understand that these, that these four are the stupidest motherfuckers I've ever seen on film, but you'd think they'd have at least the common fucking sense to not bring their fucking blood-soaked clothing with them and then keep it in a and then keep it in a suitcase in a room that isn't even the one that they're in so that way someone can find it. It lacks fucking logic and I thought that Wes Craven wrote better shit than this. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ! Okay, I totally understand you wanted to get back at him, but I don't think that you needed to bite his fucking dick off, lady. Jesus, God. That was fucking disgusting. Well, guys, that was The Last House on the Left, and the movie closes with yet another one of these really, really out-of-place songs. And don't worry, I am going to totally cover cover the, this film's tone in due time. Let me get this thing shut off. There we go. So, before I get started, um, I do want to cover one thing, because this, because this was the Blu-ray release of Last House on the left, um, I would like to comment on the picture quality, especially since the back of the thing even claims that this is the ultimate high-definition high experience. If that's the case, why the fuck is the picture so goddamn fuzzy? Yes, I understand we are talking about a movie from 1972, but I also know that I have movies in my Blu-ray collection from the 60s that have, that have a cleaner picture than this. So perhaps maybe it's just that they had like a bad copy, or perhaps maybe, or perhaps maybe this thing was filmed on low, you know, quality film. Which, since it's on a lower budget, I could totally see, you know, that as a possibility. Uh, but I still wanted to kind of get it, get get that mentioned. This this thing does not utilize high definition. I mean, it really doesn't utilize the high definition functionality of a Blu-ray disc very, you know, well. In fact, if anything, it actually makes all of the, like, fuzziness and everything pop out even more. And what is worse, there actually is dirt on the film that they never bothered to clean. Again, guys, that there's all a technical issue with this. Unless that scene's always had a big, a big fucking, like, chunk of dirt that slowly slides down the screen for about six seconds. Unless that's on every other copy of the movie ever fucking released, to have it on this thing is absolutely unforgivable. Now that I'm done bitching about the technical stuff, let's talk about the movie itself. Let's start with the writing, and with writing I get to talk about the movie's tone. I would have loved it if Wes Craven would have picked would have picked a tone and stuck with it. And I'm not talking about the music, because frankly, with with now with about 99% of this film's soundtrack being way out of place for for the scenes that that use those songs you actually kind of get you know used to it a little bit no no i'm talking about the fact that we have a story about these about these four about these four escaped criminals who kidnap who kidnap murder and rape two women and all of this is played up supposedly with a whole lot of with with a whole lot of tension and with a, and with a whole and with a whole lot of suspense and we have parents of one of, of one of the two girls is horribly worried you know, all of that's building up really good. Then we have these two cops who basically jumped out of a fucking slap... who's jumped out of a slapstick comedy. And every single one of their scenes, barring the final scene in the film, are being played up for laughs. I'm sorry, guys. It's one thing to have a single character who is, you know, kind of, you know, humorous and sort of funny in your horror films, but they normally have to n regularly interact with the other characters and just make them look a little bit quirky. You do not have these two, you do not have these two assholes who share almost no screen time with the, with the rest of the cast, whose scenes almost feel like they were lifted out of a totally different fucking movie. It doesn't work, and it absolutely destroys your film's tone, and it basically makes everything else which is supposed to feel tense and shocking feel, feel almost laughably stupid because it's paired up with that. Of course, also, the tension is completely gone when you consider the fact that these four, that these four escaped criminals all have, all have the brains of chimps and apparently have never committed a crime in, in, the, in their life where they didn't royally fuck it up somewhere. Guys, I know I've already stated most of it. I, I have stated about how one of them carved his name into a victim's chest before raping and killing her. I mentioned how they were able to lose somebody while chasing them and being only about four feet behind them, they'd lost her. 
for, you know, for, you know, a couple of minutes, and then they were exchanging, like, humorous fucking dialogue. I would almost swear that Wes Craven originally wanted to make a comedy and decided to go, no, I want to make this a bit more horror and shock-like, and it doesn't work, dude. It just doesn't. So I've mentioned that, and when you have, and, 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 and when your movie's villains are that absolutely inept and stupid, it kind of sort of sucks a whole lot of the tension from it, especially when their victims are teenagers who apparently are also stupid as shit because, well, the only reason why they were even caught in the first place by these by by these four ignorant fucks is because they were wandering around in a bad neighborhood trying to find a fix. They were trying to score some weed. Guess what? They asked for everything they fucking got. And I never thought I'd say that about the victims in a fucking horror horror movie. But hey, that is the big issue here when it comes to writing, is that every single character is absolutely unfucking likable And that also includes Mary's parents at the end when they are when they finally when they finally exact revenge on these four fucking retards. Because, you know, it's because, you know, it's one thing to just, you know, torture them and kill them and, you know, you know, basically make them pay. It's another thing to do it the way that they did. And I'd like to say right now, while I'm on the subject of how of, of how the parents got their, you know, vengeance, the back of this thing clearly talks about how hostile and saw owe, owe a whole lot to this movie. No, they don't. If anything, if anything... Of all things, Home Alone owes a lot to this thing because the fucking father is setting booby traps that are basically that are basically R-rated versions of the bullshit you saw in fucking Home Alone. It's kind of stupid. And of course that is and of course that is just to torture them, that isn't to kill them. No, no, no. He has a fucking shotgun and a chainsaw for that. Yeah, it's like, guys, this film, I couldn't find a single likable character because there also isn't a whole lot of depth to any of them. We have we have very, very little here to work off of, and the only reason why we should care about Mary and her friend is because Mary just turned 17, and she's going to go celebrate it with, with her friend, and then it all goes downhill, and it, it's fucking stupid and i really expected better from wes craven which is saying a lot because well he's also the same guy who wrote fucking scream and scream was stupid as shit too but i'm not going to get in i'm not going to get in into that so the writing here is just bad i mean guys i am even talking by 1970s standards the writing here is not that good the acting, though, shockingly works. The acting's actually pretty good. I never really thought I would say that when you're handed a script that is this shallow and this absolutely inane, but the actors were able to make it kind of work, including the two cops who, could, who, who by all rights, could have been fucking replaced by Laurel and Hardy, and it would have been just as good. Um... Everybody here is able to turn in a promising showing and a really good showing, which again is shocking because that script, that story is so fucking dumb. I am just stunned at the fact that I can talk about how the acting is that good. Um, the soundtrack, well, again, almost every single song is ridiculously out of place. As soon as as soon as Mary is raped, and as soon and as soon as the rape is done, we get hit with this sad ballad that just it just come it just comes right out of left field and it punches you in the face. Otherwise, the rest of it is that little you know like comedic thing that you heard over the end credits. It, which which also really really works when it's done with the cops. In fact, that's the only time when the music actually fits fits the tone of the scene. Um, so yes, musically this thing is just all over the place, and that actually is kind of charming. I am really willing to say that this thing, if if if, if there's anything I can truly grant it, it 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 is that it has mastered using the most unfitting music possible and making it work. So, we have that camera work. Well, I have already talked about the fuzziness of the picture, but again, that could easily just be that it was a bad Blu-ray. It could just be like a bad like Blu-ray like uh, transfer, 
Or it could just have been that the film itself was just that fuzzy. However, though, if we go beyond that, everything here is filmed very, very well. And uh, while I am on the subject of filming, I'm going to assume, I'm not totally sure, but I'm going to assume that this was filmed on a slightly lower budget, which is why you never see anything. You, you never, ever see knife wounds, gunshots, chainsaws going in. Everything is done off, you know, screen, which frankly, which, which frankly makes some of it which, which makes some of it a little bit more gruesome. Specifically, the, well, the fucking chainsaw is just nasty and you don't see anything. However, though, the gunshots and the knife wounds, those, it would have been a lot better, I think, if we'd have actually seen it. But again, if, but again, if, if, if they were limited by budget, I can totally understand, and it does kind of sort of add a little bit of a, it adds a little bit of like a Hitchcockian flair to it, because Hitchcock also never showed you like stab wounds or anything, so it kind of works there. So I'm, so, oh well, at least Hitchcock never showed stab wounds in Psycho, just clarifying that. Uh, so, you know, that works, especially, uh, uh, so yeah, we do have that. So for people who are really expecting a mountain of gore, especially when this thing, guys, is almost always touted as like the nastiest thing ever filmed in the 70s and this, that, and yada, yada, yada. It's really ridiculously tame, and I'm, and I'm saying tame even, even, even by the standards of the 70s. But then again, I'm talking standards of like the mid to late 70s. But back, but back in 72, this thing would probably have been one of the most disgusting things ever seen in theaters. So I can totally understand where, where it gets it there. It's just that it hasn't aged, you know, well. And nowadays, guys, this thing comes off ridiculously tame. So if you are... So if you are going into it and you are expecting this legendary like gore fest, which 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 some people like to try to tout it as, you're going to be ridiculously disappointed. Now I was going into it expecting a really really good re revenge film, and the writing kind of the writing kind of hobbled that with tone and with the lack of and with the lack of character depth and just a lot of other things. It just didn't help this film in the slightest. The sound mix is okay. Uh, dialogue is sometimes, you know, a little bit quiet, especially especially when the music is a little bit louder. Uh, I can, but see that though is just, but that though is just like a minor problem, and it really and it really didn't hobble it much. So I'm not so I'm not going to complain about sound mix too much. Now in the end, can I recommend the last house on the on the left? You know, with all of the negatives I have churned up for this thing, I can still give a kind of sort of yes. Specifically, guys, if if you are looking for a little piece of if you're looking for like a little piece of film history, this thing was one of the most controversial films of the early 1970s, at least in the U.S. And if you really want to see exactly what Passed for for controversial film in seventy two, right here, guys. However, oh oh, and also if you do like and and if you do go into it probably with the you know right like mind you know set, it'll it it'll probably be fantastic. In fact, this thing will probably be a lot better if I give it if I give it a second watch. So I am certainly going to hold on to this, and probably in like six months I might just I might just give like a, a second viewing see if it has improved any. However, though after this first viewing i really I, I really am not too you know floored floored by it however the movie wasn't wasn't so i mean but the movie isn't horrible it's just it's a little bit disappointing i guess because i was really i personally was expecting a really fantastic like i was really expecting a fantastic like exploitation and fucking like revenge story and i didn't really get that i got this again just you know I, I can just simply say I was let down by it, and that's really the best I can say. Now, Last House on the Left came off of the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in is, uh, a, is, uh, is a guy whose YouTube channel, and I actually had to write it down here, his YouTube channel is TRC2RockOn, and dude, thank you. Because for years I have wanted to watch this, I never had the chance... And you gave me that, you know, chance. And for that, I thank you. And uh, hopefully, when I finally get around to giving this thing a second, you know, viewing, it will, it will, it will improve. But 
frankly, this fucking like first time, I just, I just, I just, I just wasn't feeling it, guys. You know that 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 really is the best way I can sum it up. So, guys, please do me a favor and swing on over to to his YouTube channel once more. That is TRC Two Rock On. Swing over there and check out everything he has once more, dude. Thank you. This movie was a little bit of a letdown, but frankly, it was it wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. Which, um, speaking of speaking of as bad as it could have been, before anyone asks, no, I'm not going to bother with the with the fucking remake because it is because it is a remake, and in my eyes, it automatically fails by fucking by fucking default. Okay, let's just get that over and done with. So, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.